Welcome to my studio. Today I am experimenting on a cigar box lid with Gamblin cold wax and various colorants. I've never used this product before, so come on along and experiment with me as we figure out what this medium can do. Let's get started. I started by sanding lightly the cigar box lid to smooth out the edges and then I applied a coat of clear gesso all over the lid and around the edges to just prepare the substrate for the mediums that will be put on top. These are the tools that I'm going to try using with the Gamblin cold wax that you see here. So I've just gathered up some tools to use to apply the wax to the surface. And these are the colorants that I'm going to use. I have some diamond dust. It's just kind of a clear glitter. I have some copper powder that I've had in my studio forever and just don't ever know what to do with it. I have some Tim Holtz alcohol ink in a latte. There's calcium carbonate, which is also, it's ground chalk or marble dust. Some vine charcoal sticks. We're going to try some aqua pastels. They're creamy, more like an oil pastel. I have soft pastel sticks, some Tim Holtz Distress Crayons, and aren't those gorgeous? I just got these brand new set of hard new pastels from Prismacolor. And I've gathered up a variety of different weights of papers, some jelly prints, some book pages, um, some uh, excuse me, some rusted ledger sheet and some rusted watercolor paper. I have an empty tea bag, some corrugated cardboard, some tissues, this one that I stamped on and then an old dress pattern tissue paper. And those last two came from my jelly plate. One is just on a regular white paper and the metallic one is on a deli paper. So I'm just going to proceed in using matte medium, fluid matte medium, to glue these papers to the cigar box lid. And I'm just randomly choosing pieces and my intent is to cover most of the lid. I'm just using it as an experimental substrate. I find that they come in handy to make small collages on top of. Um, they're sturdy and serve the purpose. had a hard time getting this piece of ledger paper. It was so rusted. Lots of surface rust on there, so it was quite buckled and wrinkled and thick. So took me a little bit to get it put down. And just speeding through the rest of the gluing process. There's a little piece of map in there too. I like using maps in my collages. I think they're really interesting as collage elements. That watercolor paper took a little bit to get it to stick as well, just because it's thick. So, and I decided to just leave that little lady's profile peeking out in the center. There's not a whole lot of information out there that I could find anyway on using cold wax 
um, not with oil. It's intended to be used with oil paint to ex to speed up the drying time and um, give more of an impasto effect with the oils. But I did see a video, YouTube video, by Denise Saro, where she used the cold wax to do a collage without oil paint. I think she added a little bit of oil paint to the e at the very end of the video. Um, but it just looked really appealing and interesting to me so I got some and today's the experiment day and I just took that um, deli paper that I had pulled on the jelly plate and I must have used a, dil or a yeah, dilutions ink spray when I made it because the blue is moving quite a bit which was okay because it just kind of tinted the whole thing but I lost some of the patterning in the process of gluing it down but I just thought it might be interesting to just give a hazy effect over top of all the other papers so just getting the edges glued down I'm just going to turn those to the back and if I end up liking this, I will probably just mount it to a piece of mat board and put a hanger on it. So the pieces turned to the back really don't matter. You won't be, they won't be seen. And I'm just using a credit card to push out any air bubbles that got underneath that deli paper and I dried it off. So now it is ready to accept whatever I want to put on top of it with the wax. And I'm just trying to decide with these heavier papers then where I want to place them. And I will put those down with the heavier gel matte medium so they stick down better. The heavy papers don't always stick with the fluid matte medium. And there's that piece of tissue paper that I, I just stamped with a script stamp all over that tissue paper. And I, ha I have quite a few pieces of it. I use it a lot in the background, so I like, I like it a lot. And if you haven't used tissue or deli paper in your mixed media work, give it a try because it just blends right into whatever's behind it. You don't really see edges or anything once you glue it down with the matte medium. It's, I really like the, the effect that it gives. And there's another piece of that rusted ledger paper. I'm just going to layer that on top of the tea bag paper. And then I think I'm tearing up a piece of the dress pattern. Yep, and I bring it in and lay it down and then I don't like it so I take it away again. And I'm seeing it now, I kind of like it. I probably should have left it, but for some reason it just wasn't very pleasing to me, so. I took it away. And it's just kind of a dance back and forth with placement and papers and deciding what to use, what not to use, and where to put them. And then there's another piece of the dress pattern. I like to use the vintage dress patterns. I like the color that they've become. They're just kind of that aged, toned, old paper color. And they just have, when you tear them up, they have interesting little design elements. Those have the scissors and a line, and you'll very often find little arrows and numbers. So I do like to use that. So everything's glued down in the tissues. I scrunched up, that's what I'm showing you there, that I kind of scrunched it up to get some wrinkles and texture from the tissue. And there I'm just using the heavier gel 
medium to put those heavy papers down so they stick good. And here we go. This is the Gamblin Cold Wax. And I'm just going to take some out of the can and put it in my baker's tray there. I like to use the enamel trays as my palette. They're easy to clean and give me a lot of room. So you can see the texture of the wax. It's soft. It's almost like a frosting texture. I mean, it's that's the texture right out of the can. So very easy to spread and mix. And the sheet to the left there on my table, I had sheets of like three inch circle labels. So I just pulled the label part, the circles off, and now I can mix the, <clears throat> excuse me, the wax mixture onto that coated backing paper that's left and then I marked what each one was. So this first one was the soft pastel stick. And that seemed to dissolve and mix in really easy. Just if you do this, just make sure you mix it really well. And then I'm just transferring that over to the my label sheet. I'm going to add that little extra bit of wax into the mixture. The more wax you use, the more transparent the application will look. So, and I think I read you shouldn't do more than like a 50 50 ratio of colorant to wax. So I would say I probably for that was probably about a 25-75 ratio. And I'm just taking another little bit of wax and I have the hard pastel stick in a deeper blue. And I'm just using that craft knife to just shave a little bit of color off into the pile of wax. that hard pastel mixed in very easily. If you get a chance, jump over to Denise Cerro, C-E-R-R-O, to her YouTube channel and find her video. I'll try and link it in an iCard. Um, she did a really awesome collage using the cold wax. I'm really grateful for the information that she gave. That's kind of what turned me on to the cold wax. I've never used it before, so I thought, well, let's just experiment a little bit first and see what it can do and what I can do with it and which mediums I can use to color it. And you don't have to color it. It can also just be used kind of as a protective coat in your art journal keep your pages from sticking together. It does have a fairly long dry and cure time though, so just keep that in mind when you're deciding how you want to use it. <clears throat> like I said before, its intended use is for with oil paints, so um, it does have a, it will stay fragile for Mm, three or four hours maybe and then it firms up and dries off just a bit but I think total cure time is like 30 days so don't use it on something that you 
you know you want to use right away or if you do use it in your art journal use just a, an extremely thin thin um, application of it and be prepared to leave that journal open for a while bef so that the wax cures personally in my art journal I like to use the daddy vans beeswax comes in a can it's like a furniture wax um, but that dries really really fast and you can buff it right off within a couple of minutes and close your book and not have any problems so I would recommend that for protecting your art journal as opposed to using the cold wax so that yellow center circle has the aqua pastel and now I'm cutting in tiny little pieces of this orange distress crayon and when I mix it doesn't mix obviously it, as it wouldn't but it doesn't mix as easily as the shaved off like powder form of the pastel sticks but it's a little bit harder than the aqua pastel stick was and it stays a little bit granular. I'm sure if I just kept mixing it, it would eventually have all mixed in really, really well. But there were little granules, and I didn't, I didn't think I would mind that. I kind of like whatever texture happens, unless I'm going for a specific non-granular look. But for this experiment, I thought it would be kind of cool just to see how it looked. And I probably, you know, thinking back on it, I probably could have just mixed each of these right on that paper. But hindsight, right? 2020. Anyway, and just, and you notice in between, I wipe my palette knife off really well so I'm not intermixing the colors. I liked the effect that the vine charcoal had and of course with any of these like I said depending on the amount of color that you add to the wax you're going to get a different um, transparency so you may you can take it I don't think it will ever become totally opaque unless you use like a real opaque water or oil paint but in the case of the th of the things that I'm using to color it, I think it would take an awful lot to make it opaque, with the exception of the calcium carbonate. I think you could have got opaque pretty quick with that. But the vine charcoal, I think, is really pretty. that's it for a lot of the colors and I wanted to grab some other things that might give me some texture sorry I moved away from the mic there for a second so I'm starting off with this copper powder which can be caustic so I'm being careful in terms of not getting it flying through the air and all over my workspace and I just put a little bit on there with the end of a exacto knife and I'm just carefully mixing it in now I'm sure with this it was interesting that talk about being opaque I think I would have liked this a lot better had I used less of that copper powder but again it's you know depending in an actual art project it's going to depend the look that you're going for so if you wanted that deep reddish copper color and for it to not be real transparent then this would have been fine or to go over another color a bit darker than what I really wanted to do but it's okay now I grab the diamond dust and 
I have had this jar of glitter. I'm not a real big fan of glitter. I know, but I'm not. Um, but I've had it forever. I think I used it on some Christmas decorations years and years ago. It has a shaker top, but I didn't shake it out with it because it has a tendency to go everywhere. And this was a bit like trying to mix, you know, gravel. But to add texture to a piece, I think it would be really pretty cool. It clumps up. Um, you have to kind of pat it on as opposed to spreading it. Otherwise, it just ends up in one big lump. So I, I would, and I got a little bit of the charcoal mixture in there. Um, but I would be willing to, to try that. Maybe drop some ink into it or something to grab onto the glitter. So this is the alcohol ink. And when you mix a liquid into this wax, the wax, the viscosity of the wax changes. It gets thinner for sure. Um, but as the alcohol in that alcohol ink evaporate some, the wax went back to its normal buttery consistency. It, was, it thickened back up again. I need to get more alcohol inks. I don't use them very often. That's like one of the only ones that I had in my ink drawer, so that's what I grabbed. It's a pretty color. And then here's an, another supply that I've had forever and ever. And I don't even know why I bought it. It was probably on sale, real cheap or something. But they're large black mica flakes. And this ended up being probably one of my most favorite things to mix into this wax. Um, they mix in easy. Obviously, they're not going to dissolve, but to embed that awesome texture into an art project, I think, is just going to be fun. So I might actually end up using that bag of my flakes that I've had for years and years and years. I can't even tell you when I, when I bought it, and I don't think I ever used any of them. I, I probably got it for Halloween, but... I think it came from Primitives by Kathy, and it was probably in the 90s sometime when I bought it. That'd be my guess. The box is like falling apart, so. I'm glad to find something that I might use it for. And I bought this calcium carbonate to make my own um, milk paint, no, my own chalk paint. And it worked really well. I know there's recipes out there that you can use plaster of Paris to make chalk paint, but I don't like that for the fact that if you ha do put it, you can't put it down the drain and wash your brushes, you know, have it going down the drain. And it's pretty toxic too, where calcium carbonate is just like ground chalk. They call it marble dust. Um, I read somewhere that this could be mixed with cold wax, so that's why I tried it. I had it, so I figured I'd try it. I'm not real sure. That's another one that I would have to play with more or maybe see how someone else used it. It just, I don't know, it's just kind of a semi-opaque white blah. Maybe to add texture, like it it got pretty thick. It thickened the wax quite a bit. And then to add color, you would, could probably get an impasto effect just with that in the wax. Um, just regular old alcohol to clean up. I just dumped some in my tray and wiped it out and all the wax came right out.
So that's good. No special solvents or anything is necessary. I cleaned all my tools with the alcohol as well. <coughs> So I'm ready to play. I grabbed a piece of mixed media paper and thought, let me just see what each of these does on its own before I try to use it on top of that little collage. So I'm starting with the silicone spatula and grabbed a stencil. This is a dilution stencil. I tried to show you the name of it. I don't know if it's even readable. Some Something small circles I think maybe it's called. And I'm just pushing the wax through and because of the it's so transparent it's hard to really see is there very much on there? Am I going to see it when I lift this up? I wasn't quite sure the angle to use the spatula. So I finally discovered when I went up on the very tip of that spatula that it worked better. Because as you can, I'm sure you can see the wax is just building up against the edges of the stencil. And I thought, I'm not sure if I'm going to like how that's going to look, but I did. It turned see pretty. It turned out pretty good. So since I like that one so much, I grabbed the Crafters Workshop stencil in mini cubes. This is the name of it, and I'm just gonna use that darker blue that came from the hard pastel stick. And same issue, I'm still getting used to laying this wax down. I'm sure the more I work with it, the more comfortable I will be. I hope you try it. It's not real expensive, and I think it's just a cool supply to have in your arsenal of art supplies for when you want to use it. It doesn't seem like a medium that you know would go bad if it was left on the shelf. I tried this color shaper tool but I didn't I just didn't like it as well as that rubber spatula. The wax seemed to stick to the tool more than it did to the silicone. Just a difference I guess in materials and how the wax behaves. But that stencil turned out well, also, I like I like that look. And I thought, all right, let me just use the palette knife and see what happens if I just spread some of this on the paper. And again, it was a little bit of a dance trying to decide how much pressure do I use? Do I like the marks the knife is making? Do I not? And then I decided to go over top of the part that I stenciled. Now, if I had left that for a couple of hours and then went back over top of it, I'm sure it wouldn't have reacted the same. I, I got it over um, by going very, very lightly. And some of the blue did kind of melt into the yellow. But I like that too. It got kind of a green effect and a little bit of smearing. But hey, it's all an experiment, so was all okay with me. And I just grabbed the nib pen just to make some marks through. And I grabbed this paint scraper. And I like how this went on. That's a technique, an application technique that I'm sure I will use a lot. So there I just got it very light and then I put some over top of it in more of a heavier application. And use the edge of the scraper to 
cut into the wax and just make some marks. Sorry, Facebook is notifying me that somebody commented on a post. <laughs> so yeah, I like the scraper. I have a narrower edged hard plastic scraper that I'm sure I will probably be grabbing in the future. And then this is that vine charcoal. And I just really like it a lot. I don't know if it's the color or the texture, but I just, and I'm just trying different pressures with the palette knife and the different tools just to see what kind of effect I can get. So this is just a fun experiment to do. This is the copper powder. That was really pretty as well. Not as metallic a look as I was expecting, but nevertheless, it's, it's really pretty. And you see how easy it is to just incise into it with your tools. And you can make all kinds of marks and just have fun. Reminded me of finger painting when I started doing that. And then that is the alcohol ink. I thought, well, I like blue and brown together. Let's see what happens if I put this brown over the blue stencil. And it, it was pretty. So I think I need to get more comfortable with just applying it and experimenting with different looks that I can get with it. That's the diamond dust. And again, like I said, I had to kind of pat it in um, to the wax and not so much spread it. It just isn't spreadable. But for an area of texture, I think that will work really, really well. I mean, I've read where you can embed like pebbles and stones. Obviously, you need more wax than I'm using here, but it's just a whole new area of possibilities with this wax, I think, in mixed media work that I didn't know about before, so I'm kind of ex <laughs> excited to see what else I can try. This is my absolute favorite. Those black mica flakes, I'm going to be using those up. I like them a lot. And just with the clear wax, I mean, you don't see the wax really. You just see the texture of the mica, and it's quite wonderful, I think. I like it over that yellow. There was quite a bit of wax up there, so it's moving around more than where I just applied it by itself there at the bottom first, but yeah, I'm liking it. And when I got to the, to putting everything on the collage, I was sorry that I hadn't mixed more of that up. And then finally, just the calcium carbonate. You can see just on the white paper, it's just 
kind of like white texture and that's good I guess I mean you know you put it down as texture and then color over it or color it to begin with add a colorant with the calcium carbonate and use it to create some thicker textures because it like I said it did thicken up the wax a bit so I just need to research applications for that a little bit more because it just wasn't real apparent to me. Nevertheless, I spread it around, used it up, and we'll see when that dries. If anything changed or, you know, everything looks the same. But I just took that stencil now while the wax is obviously nowhere near dry and a baby wipe and I'm just seeing let's see can I lift some of that wax and what happens when I do this and some of it lifted and some of it just pushed up against the edges of the stencil and I like that effect too The cool thing about the wax as opposed to paint, which is my usual medium, is the open time. I mean, I could have done this for hours and hours and the wax still would remain workable. So, okay, so now I brought in my little cigar box collage and I'm basically just doing the same thing. I'm just going to use some more of this wax and my goal was just to get wax over the entire surface of this little collage so that's what I did and that palette knife did not work to apply it through that stencil so I went back to the silicone spatula and I think I have a smaller one of these somewhere, a smaller spatula like this, I think came in a set. Um, I may have to find that because I think that would be even more handy. I hope you're enjoying watching this experimental process here and it's not boring for you. It was certainly not boring as I was doing it. I was excited with each new thing I tried. And I hope it's helpful for you if you haven't tried cold wax or heard of it before. It's certainly after 40 plus years of doing art, I didn't know about it um, and was excited. It's not real expensive either. So I was excited to get some and play with it. And like I said, I can find very little in terms of applications where oil paint is not being used. So hopefully if you're in the same boat as me and you're not an oil painter, I don't even have any oil paint in my studio, but you like mixed media and enjoy doing um, artwork and collage work, I'm hoping that this will be of value to you. Maybe you will share this video with other people who you know also might be interested in trying cold wax. I would appreciate it. So you see the textures just it's really cool. It's just very different than paint. Very, very different um, in terms of the look that you get with the stencil. And I'm just taking some of that orange and hitting the top of the corrugated cardboard and then just applying it onto the tissue paper.
this is totally intuitive, you guys. I didn't plan any of it. I didn't plan the collage composition. I certainly didn't plan where I was going to put the wax on this collage. I'm just flying by the seat of my pants as usual and just giving everything a try. And this is not a piece that I intend to sell or do anything with. It's just a total experiment to see well, how will this look or what if I put this there or whatever. So some of it worked and some of it didn't. I liked some of it and I didn't like other parts of it, but that's how we learn, right? And I have a lot to learn when it comes to cold wax, but I'm looking forward to it because I really like the effect. That color shaper tool did work really well to just apply a, like a thin layer of the wax. It just didn't work as well through the stencil. But to just do what I'm doing right there, it laid down a nice thin layer. I liked it. Kind of wish I hadn't done that. I wasn't crazy about it after I put that blue over the orange. I should have known it was going to make mud, right? I also wanted to use up the wax that I had mixed up. I kind of, even like I said, it's not expensive, but I kind of like, oh, I don't want to waste any of it. So since it's an experiment, let's just put it all on. You feel like that about your art supplies? It's like, oh, I don't want to waste it. Also, and I, justly so if it's something that's expensive, you don't want to waste. But like I said, I have a whole can of this wax and I don't know, I think it was $14 or something. The supply list will be in the description box. So you have some Amazon links to go get some for yourself. If that's what you'd like to do. I hope you try it. If you do, come back and leave a comment and let me know how you like it or what you did differently with it that worked for you. We love to learn from everybody else too. We can experiment together. I'm sure there's a million and ten applications that this could be used for. And I'm not sure why there's not more information online from mixed media artists using it without oil paint. And I suppose, I mean, even if you watch the videos or read whatever, regarding using it with oil, you can reinterpret that information to using it with in different ways. You can't use, when I, even though I might try, but not supposed to use it with acrylics because the cold wax is a solvent base or an oil base and acrylics are water base. So I have a feeling that might have been part of the reason why I got some granul granularization with the Tim Holtz crayon because they are water soluble. So that may be part of it. It may just be because the pieces, I didn't mix them up well enough. But anyway, you're not supposed to use the wax with um, acrylic paint or water-based medium. But like I say, I'm going to push the boundaries. I might try it and see if I can force that. So of course there were no mica flakes left on my little sample circle. So I grabbed the 
piece of mixed media paper and decided to just, since it's not dry, yay, I can just scrape it off of there and put it on my collage instead. And I really liked it. And I think it's cooler looking in person where you can really see the texture a lot better. And this isn't a real thick application, so I mean you could just use a lot. I think it would be easier to put a layer of wax down and then sprinkle the mica on top of it and then maybe use the palette knife or the, the um, spatula to embed those mica flakes into the layer of wax that's already laid down on the substrate. But of course I didn't know and I didn't think of it. So that was an afterthought. I might try that next time. And I'm sorry this video is so long. It's, you know, one of my longest videos, but I just wanted to get on film like all the different colorants and things that I use to, to create texture. And really I was just playing and filming. So I'm sorry if I'm boring you with such a long video. I hope you stick with me to the end so you can see the finished collage though. I'll give you a close up at the end and you can get a better idea of how all the different pieces, parts came together. Hmm, we're getting there. We're almost done. I just wanted, like I said, I wanted to cover the entire surface with wax. So I just spread some over the lady's face there. And I just grabbed that pen again and just decided I wanted to make some marks in the wax. I want to see how that looks when it dries and the feel of it. That was a thinner layer there, so the lines are more faint. And it's going to depend on what paper's underneath as to how much contrast you're going to get, but. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, subscribe and share it with your friends and give it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. All that really helps. And then I read somewhere where you just heat the wax just till it glistens, not till it melts or runs, but just till the surface glistens. I think it just kind of helps bring everything together and smooth things out. So that's what I did here at the end. I hope you enjoyed this video. In the meantime, go make some art. Bye.